Hey, and welcome to Need It Make It, I'm Mike. So two videos ago, we created a few different types of tapered dovetail connections, and I'm a huge dovetail fan, it's a strong connection. But when it comes to 3D printing, is there a connection that actually doesn't require any fasteners that's even better? Let's see if we can come up with one or even two. So stick around. Before we get into it, the goal is 100,000 subscribers by 2025, and we're making great progress towards that, especially in the last few weeks. So thank you to all my subscribers and to my Patreon supporters as well for helping to make this channel possible. I'm committed to making new and interesting content, so if you haven't subscribed, I'd love the extra support, and we'll keep these kinds of videos coming, and even better. I've noticed that people are printing bigger and bigger parts, and pretty soon they're gonna to wanna to make their own furniture, and it would be great to be able to take those ancient connections that we already know and adapt them for 3D printing so that they're stronger, so they fit tighter, and we can include more complicated shapes because we're not limited by the tools that we'd use to cut and machine those joints in wood. Now, one of the issues with the dovetail is the dovetail itself. It works so well because it's a wedge, and we also tapered it so it was a wedge in every direction. Now, because of this, we had to be fairly careful in the design not to make any one piece too small, or it would cause the parts to deform. So is there a connection that works like a dovetail, but also doesn't cause the joint to want to push apart? Well, I have two ideas that I wanna try out, so let's see if we can figure out how to create them. There's a comment that came up in the last video about why exactly a dovetail would work at all, what's so special about it, and why a wedge would work. So here's a practical example of a wedge shape. So here we have some screw threads. They are a wedge essentially wrapped around a cylinder. And here I have a load cell and I have the readout for it. This time it is in kilograms, you guys asked for it. So I can apply, this is just two fingers around the central pivot point. And I can apply nearly 30 kilograms with two fingers. So a little bit over if I put a bit more force on it. So this is the same principle that we're using, just a different application. For anyone looking for strong and tight screwed connections, I'm working on a video on that topic, but for now I'm gonna be sticking with no fasteners and no adhesive. So if you're a fastener buff, I will have a video for you as well. The idea is we want to try and pull those parts together and keep the joint as tight as possible. And if we can do that, they're gonna act more like a solid continuous piece and not like two separate wibbly wobbly pieces. And looking at that dovetail with the wedge shape, we're going to see the dovetail itself that wants to compress and the walls around it are going to want to push outward. The issue is that the walls around the dovetail need to be quite a bit larger to make sure that they're strong enough to withstand that force. But I have an idea to help prevent this problem that could work well. What we need is a way to lock those flanking pieces from coming apart. I'm gonna start with a sketch from the very bottom and we'll just create a simple dovetail shape and we'll do an included angle of 30 degrees. And the dovetail in the last video was kept pretty small, but here I think we can increase the size. Maybe 10.5 millimeters, eight millimeters deep. And we need to make sure that this is centered. So this is what we are looking for for the first shape, and this does need to extend this far. Okay, for the other side, we're gonna do basically the same shape, but I'm gonna do it in parts. One, two, and three parts. And again, it's gonna extend, but it doesn't need to extend as far. So here I've only extended a few millimeters and I'm just gonna put in two millimeters beyond the intersection of the two rail pieces. We need to have these between three and four millimeters. So I'm gonna go with four millimeters. And then as far as how far out they are, three millimeters is good. And again, the angle is gonna be 30 degrees. Now we can extrude the first central dovetail up and we're gonna be using a taper on that one. It's gonna be smaller towards the top. So I'll set that to negative 1.5 degrees. And here's the really interesting part. We're going to be extruding the other shape towards the top with 1.5 degrees. So they're tapering in opposite directions. So what we need to do now is we need to take this shape and subtract the shape from it and we can keep the tools. So we're left with these bodies here. So now we can take those two shapes and we can start by adding the central dovetail to the red side. We'll keep that tool. We can subtract that same shape from the gray side and we can then remove the tool and we'll do the same things for the opposing side. We have this piece tapering 
smaller towards the top and we have this side tapering larger towards the top. Now if you wanted to go for a permanent connection you could probably just leave this as is and when you try and put those parts together it will fit very tight. But it's probably a good idea to have at least a little bit of clearance so we can take all of the dovetail related faces and we can offset them by negative 0 0.05. And just like the last video all of the outside are going to get 0.3 millimeter radius and all of the inside will get 0.2. In the corners here, it gives a little bit more allowance. And then, so that is this connection pretty well finished. I'm just going to pretty this up a little bit and then we can go ahead and get this one printed. And this is the result. It's not only a really good looking connection, but I think this one can be quite a bit stronger than just the single tapered dovetail. The next connection might be my favorite. I'm calling this one the drop lock. The inspiration for this one came from a connection in woodworking that we call the finger joint. It's a really strong connection because it maximizes the glue surface area and allows the glue to bond mainly to face screen and it extends the parts into one another as well. Unfortunately, the finger joint relies completely on glue to make that connection work. So we're gonna take that concept and completely change it around. So for this connection, it's easiest to have the sketch plane centered through the part. We'll start by drawing a line beginning at the center point and we can create this trapezoidal shape again and it also extends a few millimeters beyond the joint between the mating parts. This time we're going to add an arc tangent to the lines at each of the ends and the included angle for any of these connections can be whatever you like. And now we can pattern this to each side and we need to make sure to have it spaced out to each side by double the width at the base and this is really important. Of course, if you want to try this and the connection you'd like to make is larger than this example, you can just add more of these as well. We can then extrude these shapes to both sides with the angle that we'd like to use, but here, because they're pretty small, I'm just going to be using negative one degree up and one degree down. And we'll create these as new bodies as well. Now with this design, the opposing side is a mirror image, but it's also rotated around. And this is where it's very important to have your spacing correct. You can see how these line up. We're going to subtract those parts and we're going to add those parts and then we're left with these shapes that interlock. We're going to do the same offsetting as well. Now with these parts I've designed them to be more of a permanent connection and with so much contact area they're going to be harder to get together and harder to take apart. So if you're looking for pieces that you want to be able to take apart just add a little bit more clearance than I did and I've used 0.05 millimeters for these parts and it's just about right. Just like the last video, you can also create a scarf joint from these connections as well. And when I did this, I have to change the angle to 0.5 degrees and negative 0.5 degrees because it's extended this so much that these become too big and too small. There were a lot of comments in the last video about seeing how strong these connections really are. So I'm putting together a test video for all of the connections that I've created so far. So if you're curious about how they perform in tension and in torsion as well, don't forget overall satisfaction. I should have that video out in a few weeks and if it's released already, it will be linked up above there. I guess all we have left to do is put them together and see how they look and see how they work. And here are our finished parts. Here is the drop lock. I'll put that together in a minute. Here is the echo lock. So here's one of the parts from the last video. This is a tapered dovetail on a scarf. Comes together really nicely. Makes a really strong connection. Let's go ahead and try these ones.
This one seems especially strong. I would say this one seems quite a bit stronger than this one as far as how easy it is to open up the joint. This one seems to open up just a little bit easier. But until we can put some load on this and actually test it, we won't know for sure. Well, out of both of these connections, I'm really impressed with this one, the Echo Lock, because when we're trying to pull this connection apart, it's going to apply force out and trying to open this up. But this small piece doesn't have a lot of leverage to open this up. So it's also going to apply a force inward to this dovetail to help keep this connection together. As for this one, I think this one can be improved. I think the angle that I chose to use here probably wasn't ideal. This would be good if it was a glued connection, but it doesn't do a great job of keeping the connection together compared to this one. If I could remove a finger and change these angles to 30 degrees rather than 15 degrees, I think that would be a different story. So I'd like to improve this connection for the next video, for the test video. But let me know what you guys think about these two connections and whether there are any improvements that you think can be done to these. Let me know which ones you like the most and if you have ideas that you think could be even better, maybe they can make an appearance in a future video as well. Originally, I was going to call this one Alien Fingers, but I ended up settling on Drop Lock, but which one do you prefer? I want to say thank you to each of my patrons for helping to support this channel and making these videos possible. And if you want to help support this channel as well, there is a link down there below. Take care, everybody, and we will see you on the next one.